Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. A murky, forgotten land. Souls may mend your ailing mind. You will lose everything once branded. The symbol of the curse. An augur of darkness. Your past, your future, your very light. None will have meaning and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, you will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. flame. Your wings will burn in anguish. Time after time. For that is your fate. The fate of the cursed. Just my bloody luck. How in the... What did I do?
What seems to be the ruckus? Oh my, your face. The face of the curse. It's an undead. An undead has come to play. <laughs> they all end up here. All the ones like you. You spoke to that kind old dear, didn't you? <laughs> You're finished. You'll go hollow. Yes, you will become one of them. Hollows prey upon men, feast upon their souls. This is the fate of the cursed. <laughs> your name I'm Patches do you have business with me It's coming back to me now. All people come here for the same reason. To break the curse. You're no different, I should think. Hmm. Doesn't stand a chance. Well, you never know. <laughs> 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 Go through the door and trot along to the kingdom. But remember, hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going hollow. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. You'll lose your souls. All of them. Over and over again. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> you impossible little wench. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe we've met. Are you the next monarch? Or merely a poor thief? Bearer of the curse. I will remain by your side till this frail hope shatters. Take this with you. 
May it ease your journey. Ooh. Go on and see the king. He who made Dranglake what it once was. He who peered at the essence of the soul. King Vendrick. Reasonably sane. My name is Melentia. I'm Trusty Patches. You're a stranger to this land. Oh, we get as strangers these days. Everybody's gone and run off. <laughs> Drang Lake's been a pile of rubble since the war, thought long, long ago. And the giants crossed the sea. treacherous times. Well, I hope you have a very good reason. Oh, hogwash. Who am I to judge? <laughs> My name is Pate. Yeah? I journey hither and thither on a sort of treasure hunt, you might call it. Be careful out there. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers like yourself. Oh yes, you'll be cautious if you go any farther. There's treasure in there for certain, but the entrance locks from behind. I saw the same design earlier, and it's the same contraption, I'm sure. I was with this warrior, you see, 
and he insisted that he go inside first. <laughs> the rather brusque fellow tried to swipe the loot for himself, but it trapped him inside. I still have the gent's ring. I do hope he wasn't harmed. I'll leave this one to you. I'm worried about what might be inside. Do you watch your step? <laughs> God spit, I knew something was wrong. to escape. I hope that brave warrior didn't come a cropper either. Be careful out there. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers like yourself. Oh, but you should take this. It allows undead to call out for help to one another across the fissures between worlds. With luck, Somebody will lend you a hand. Well, I hope be... Well, I hope be careful. We'll be wonderful friends. <laughs> stash of treasure. Bloody giant!
fantastic! <laughs> So, Dark Souls 2. To keep with my theme of playing these games backwards, I'm saving DS1 for last as opposed to this game. And if you're curious, I decided to make this a Patches playthrough because he's not in this game. Well, not himself proper, at least. And since I'm not speaking during gameplay, I'm going to have sections at the end of each video to kind of talk about my feelings towards whatever I went through in this video. I might also use visuals during certain parts of gameplay if I feel really strongly about something. Alright, Dark Souls 2, the black sheep of FromSoft Souls games. Honestly, it started out quite good. It was refreshing to get myself into a new Souls game. It felt fun to start things up again. Now let's start with the things I liked. I've heard DS2 kind of shines in its story and themes more so than its gameplay. It felt pretty interesting. World of Dark Souls 2 is just an interesting one in general. I know DS2 takes place after DS1 pretty closely. Definitely makes me more hyped for when I finally do play Dark Souls 1. Another thing is the amount of flexibility in choosing where you can go to start your adventure. There's the four lords or whatever they're called in this one you gotta defeat. It seems the game just lets you go wherever you want so far. I went the pretty general route to start off, but apparently you can go wherever else. I've heard that DS1 starts similarly, and that DS3 is a lot more linear, which I know you'll experience firsthand. I didn't dislike the linearity, but I can see why the openness is favored. Kind of like with Elden Ring too. Uh, I honestly like the incorporation of life gems as other means to heal reminiscent of demon souls i'm curious if people's favoring them over the less than great estus flasks in this game is why bloodborne had its vital vile system having to buy healing then again it's optional in this game whereas it's mandatory in bloodborne so who can say for sure <laughs> lastly on things i liked at least for now I'm a fan of the more nuanced and contextual stuff this game's had in it so far, and I've seen. 
a lot of experimentation and interesting ideas. It's heard Dark Souls 2 is the most experimental of the bunch, and it really shows. Some things are great, some aren't. Kind of already developing a bit of a general opinion of the game, but since I'm not finished just yet, I have to put my thoughts on hold. Now, let's talk about some of the bad things I've experienced so far. First thing I immediately noticed upon starting my playthrough is character movement. The movement does not seem to be completely radial. I'm trying to move your character, say, just a few degrees off of directly forward or in one direction makes the movement snap to a certain angle. You can move slightly off, but it seems to snap at like four cardinal directions and the four between them, so kind of eight angles specifically. Slightly over off of them. It's a very, it's just, it feels very weird. And it hasn't become an issue so far, but it did make me have to overuse the camera for precise movements in certain situations. Now to end us off, it's time to discuss everyone's favorite DS2 stat, adaptability. Yeah, tying a stat to iframes is just really, really bad. Or at least the way it's implemented in this game is not great. I could see something like that working for other games, but definitely not Dark Souls. That's mainly because the amount of iframes at lower default adaptability are really, really bad. People like to complain about the bad hitboxes in this game, and I wonder if it's because the dodge roll seems to be visually identical at every level of adaptability while performing better at higher adaptability. So we kind of no one was upset was absent from future titles. A few last bits before I end my thoughts for this video. Uh, Majula is a really nice hub zone. Quite fond of it, and I really do like the NPCs that are scattered around. Stick around all the time, as far as I'm aware, unlike in Dark Souls 3, so it adds to the comfort of the place. Uh, I like the idea of the pursuer as an adversary that well, pursues you. Having the boss fight be this early, though, feels like a missed opportunity for some confrontations throughout, up until, like, some ultimate boss fight that is a bit more cathartic. Kind of get, getting rid of him now feels, well, he's not much of a pursuer then, is he? Uh, Fire Slot Stones are an interesting idea. Leave them at that. Could take them or leave them, really. The combat pacing is slow, kind of like Demon Souls, which I expected, but man, is the jump in pacing from this to Bloodborne staggering. Uh, lastly, I heard people complain about torches having a limited timer. Honestly, I don't mind it. It's just something I have to be smart about managing. It also makes me think that the torch will have more usability for other situations later on. Like it's a precious resource that I shouldn't waste. I don't know. Lighting up dark places is always handy though. Especially with this game's bizarre lighting choices. I think that's everything. Alrighty, well, that's all for episode one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tune in for more, and take care.